The Azores is an archipelago of nine islands in the North Atlantic Ocean, situated roughly 1,500 kilometers west of Lisbon. It is an official autonomous region of Portugal, making it the most western area of Europe. The Azores covers an area of some 2,350 square kilometers with a population of almost 250,000 people. The Gulf Stream current that starts from southern Florida cuts straight through the Azores, creating a year-round temperate climate. With winter lows of 14 degrees Celsius and summer weather averaging in the mid-20s, the Azores has started to become a travel getaway for tourists from North America and Europe in particular. The Azores is one of two Portuguese autonomous states, the other being Madeira, which lies between Portugal and North Africa. Being an autonomous region means the Azores is granted the right of self-government with the democratically elected bodies. It also has executive and legislative powers to act independently. However, underlying the considerable freedom of this autonomy is that the Azores still belongs to Portugal. The Portuguese constitution lists the Azores as its subject, albeit with autonomous powers. The bottom line is that the Azores is pretty much free to govern itself and make its own policies, just as long as it falls in line with the guidelines of the Portuguese constitution. This brings about the question of independence. If the Azores were to officially break away from Portugal to become a sovereign country, what would it look like? Many argue that it would be far more economically viable to remain an autonomous state, enjoying the best of both worlds, essentially. Economic support from Lisbon with political independence is a fairly agreeable arrangement. Those who claim independence is the only way forward would beg to differ and argue that only by becoming fully sovereign of a country can the Azores make true progress. The Azores has been under Portuguese rule ever since the 15th century when it officially colonized in 1439. Apart from having ideal conditions for agricultural output, the Azores was also very conveniently located for voyages to and from the West African coast. The islands proved to be tremendously useful as a stop-off point for refreshing supplies and were envied by other European powers. This led to several conflicts. However, Portugal was always able to retain the Azores. Interestingly, the archipelago was, however, used as an allied air base during World War II, which was crucial for the control of Atlantic convoy routes and for added airstrike power. In 1974, Portugal's authoritarian government was overthrown, and Portugal became a democratic nation. This led to the Portugal Constitution, which was drawn up in 1976. The new constitution officially recognized the Azores as an autonomous region of Portugal, and with it came the right to self-government and legislative powers. This basically means the Azores has its own regional government and its own tax-raising powers. As an autonomous region, it has the power to oversee its regional economic and social development planning and manages its own budget. As long as they follow Portuguese guidelines, the Azores can also carry out negotiations for international treaties and agreements concerning the region. The Azores can legislate policies related to agriculture, fisheries, trade, energy, tourism, infrastructure, environment, and regional planning. When Portugal entered the EU in 1986, it opened up a huge new market for Azores exports, which was largely agricultural and from the sea. It also meant generous EU fundings from the Azores. This is a significant source of funding for the region and encompasses everything from scientific research and development to promoting businesses and investments in education and vocational training. If the Azores were to break away from Portugal and become fully independent, it's uncertain whether this substantial source of funding would continue, at least in terms of how much would be spent. Gaining independence would mean the majority of people in the Azores supporting such a move in a referendum. While there is indeed strong backing for such a move against many segments of the population, it's hard to see such a drastic move being approved in a referendum. Why independence? The Azores Libertarian Front is confident that independence is a viable option. This is largely backed by its significant economic exclusive zone, which is far greater than Portugal's. An economic exclusive zone relates to the area of water from land that a country or region can lay claim to for economic and commercial activities. The Azores' fishing industry shows major potential for future growth and opportunity. The region has an abundant supply and a wide range of marine life that would be prime exports for both fresh and canned fish. Tuna is one of the world's most sought-after fishes and the Azores has got plenty of it, as well as mackerel and herring, which also sell well. The livestock industry has been a long-time major contributor to the Azores' economy. 
dairy products, meat, and poultry are exported to the Portuguese mainland and a wide range of countries throughout Europe. Agricultures, fisheries, and forestry make up the backbone of the Azores economy. A growth in services has resulted in improved employment levels, with jobs being created in administrative and supportive services, defense, education, health, and social work. Added to this is the recent growth in tourism in the Azores, with a particular focus on adventure travelers. The Azores' picturesque, mountainous landscape with volcanic origins has become something of a hotspot for intrepid travelers on the lookout for the next undiscovered destination. All of this economic activity and potential gives independence proponents beliefs that a break away from Portugal would actually be a success. However, this could be problematic. Possible reductions in EU funding aside, the repercussions for an independent Azores could pose some very real difficulties. Firstly, there is a lack of diversity and development in the economy. The Azores is currently too reliant on its natural resources and needs a better educated and more skilled workforce. It's estimated that over 75% of the Azores' workforce only has a basic education, with this being even higher in areas that focus on agriculture or on fisheries as well. A huge amount of investment is required to help promote growth in key industries like technology, manufacturing, and finance. The current Azores' GDP is roughly $4 billion per year, with a GDP per capita of around $16,000. Compare this to other autonomous regions around the world, and it would seem that the Azores is still a long way from having the sufficient economic development necessary to become independent. For example, the Pacific Territory of Guam has a population of just 170,000, yet boasts a GDP of almost $6 billion. The British-controlled Isle of Man's population is 85,000, with a healthy GDP of over $7 billion. And if we look at these territories, it makes sense for the Azores to remain an autonomous region and continue to gradually diversify its economy and increase its skills and education of its workforce. The region is focusing on attracting international investment in areas like information technology, industrial parks, and renewable energy. The archipelago is set up with submarine cable connections that link it with the United States and mainland Portugal. With EU funding, the Azores will benefit from investment in several key areas over the next decade. These include construction, infrastructure, IT, and education. As an autonomous region, the Azores has an exciting future full of possibilities. And that is especially the case if it chooses not to chase independence. For now, at least.